Okay. Welcome, Kate, to my YouTube channel. Kate and I met through the Ex Jehovah's Witness Facebook group, Empowered Ex Jehovah's Witness, and I haven't heard her story yet. So, Kate, how did the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Jehovah's Witnesses, come into your life? Um, so I was actually raised in. Uh, my mother was baptized. She started studying when she was seventeen, but she was baptized when she was nineteen. Um, and my mom had me when she was. 40 years old. So I was raised in, she had been in for a couple decades. Um, my dad was raised in also, um, his grandmother or his mother was a Jehovah's witness, but I don't believe his grandparents were. And I, I didn't know my grandparents for very long. They passed when I was four. So he was raised in, he never ended up getting baptized though. So I was just raised in and he just kind of went along with everything despite not being, you know, a baptized witness himself. Okay. So you grew up as a witness and are you the only child? No, I'm one of five. I'm the youngest of five. Okay. Did all of your siblings grow up in the in the religion? Um, they did. My oldest brother is the only one who wasn't raised in from birth. Um, my mom was 16 when she had him, so he was only like four or five whenever she started. Um, uh, whenever she got baptized and she had been studying for a little bit, so you know he he probably doesn't remember even being out. To be honest with you. Okay. Wow. So at what age were you baptized? I got baptized. Let's see. It was November 16th, 2016. So I was eight. No, not 16. I can't even remember, but I was 16. I remember that. So I think it was November, November 16th, 2014. Okay. So I would say that you were kind of a late bloomer. I feel like a lot of people get baptized at like 11, 12, 13. I was also 16 when I got baptized. So we were- I was 14 when I told my mom, I'm never going to be a Jehovah's Witness. Okay. I remember very distinctly telling her before getting baptized that I was never going to do it. So I'm curious, what led you to your baptism if you said you were never going to do it? Uh, I I very much remember the day I told her and she's like, you still have to attend meetings until you're 18, until you're out of my house. Um, So I remember looking out my window and thinking, wow, like what is what is life? What is this? Like, I have nothing, no one. And it was like, it was such a bright, sunny day. And I remember like, now I would look at that day and see such a beautiful freeing day. But honestly, it was like a seal of death for me. Cause like I had nothing, I had no one. So I just, I kind of felt like I had already been shunned for a while. Um, I started being shunned when I was 14. So, you know, the going through all that and then deciding not to do it, I'd already been shunned for a while. Um, and then I decided Sorry. why not just give it a shot is that from something that you um you had a relationship with a boy when you were 14? No, not even. Um uh, my best friend at the time, her name was Sarah. She was uh she's maybe half a year younger than me. I told her I'm not sure if I believe in God. Because I pray and there's no no answer. I don't feel connected to anyone, anything. And I I just feel I don't feel like there's something there. Mm-hmm. So at 14 years old, you were saying this to your friend. And then at what point and how did you get shunned? Just Was it just by her or was it other people? She told me over text, well, I can't be friends with you anymore. And I I remember telling, there was a group about four or five of us that we were all like a little clique. We were all like best friends. It was a thing in our kingdom hall, like that we were that group of girls. But I told each and every one of them, and she was my best friend, and everyone knew that, and she immediately shunned me. She mourned me like I died from what I was told after um, years later, but she told me she couldn't be friends with me anymore because in order for me to be friends with her, I had to have faith and be a Job's Witness and all that, and she was pursuing that. She got baptized shortly afterwards, too. Okay, so it was this soft shunning that you had back then? No, completely shunned. Like, she did not speak to me. She, I was treated as if I was, as if I didn't exist, as if I was a stranger. Okay, so you were already kind of disfellowshipped and not even baptized with that whole situation. Yeah, yeah. At 16 years old, you finally got baptized. Did you reconnect with this friend? I did, and funny enough, out of all of the four or five friends that I was friends with at the time, she was the only one that spent the day with me, like, because that that was kind of the clue, whether you were, like, in or out, you know, when you got baptized, everyone flocks to you, she was the only one, next to my niece and my nephew, my sister's kids, she was the only one that spent time with me, and everyone else just stayed away. 
I guess they, I guess they felt like it wasn't um, genuine. I guess that's the only way I could put it. I completely could see that. So at 16 years old, you get baptized. And then what happens after that? Um, I'm attending meetings, uh, you know, not necessarily pioneering, maybe more special pioneering, but I don't think I ever officially, like, I don't remember ever officially special pioneering. I just would put in the hours, but I hate it. I hate it going into field service. I think everybody kind of hates it, but I, I have such bad social anxiety at the time that it was terrifying for me. And I just did not want anyone to answer the door. So you were, you were trying to auxiliary pioneer for the month and then you had the social anxiety just because of all the pressure that was in the congregation to put more hours into the ministry. So you were trying to do that to probably just make everyone happy. And yeah, then a lot the- of it was to just make people happy. Honestly, I look back at it and I've, I wish that I had never even gotten baptized because my life would have been much simpler if I hadn't, but okay. But yeah. Walk us through like what happened after you got baptized, you were pioneering or you're putting in the hours. What happened after that? Um, six months tops I stopped attending six months tops I mean like I said it's it's been a little bit now I'm 25 now so it's it's been about 10 years since then but yeah I I think it was about six months and I was like I cannot do this I'm not doing this I can't fake it anymore like I remember none of my friends were my friends anymore they still shunned me from the time I was 14 basically nobody felt like any of the effort I put in was genuine I guess they all thought I was just doing it you know, just to get my life back, which I was, I genuinely was, but I also was genuinely trying to put effort in like, okay, maybe I just don't have enough faith. And what, what was going on at home? What were your parents like when all of this was happening? Um, My dad was not really present on and off throughout my life. So I didn't even think my dad was living with us at the time. So, you know, that wasn't really too much of a factor but my mom was really sick. She was going through a lot of stuff. There was a, a strong point after baptism that she wasn't attending at all just because she was so sick. She had a heart failure. So, you know, she wasn't really attending. I was going by myself. I was getting a lot of praise for going by myself despite her not attending. Um, but, you know, life was hard. Like, and and honestly, you know, to be more vulnerable about it, I was around 12 when I discovered like porn because of just being in school and public school and kids talking about it. So from around 12 to like, I'd say maybe 18, 19 years old, like I had a strong addiction to like pornography, all those different things. So that definitely affected me. And I remember like confessing about it and being like questioned by elders about it. And just overall, just, it was so uncomfortable for me. And I just thought, this is just awful. I cannot do this. This is crap. Like, it was just all too much going on at once. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm curious. Your mom was sick. You had this addiction happening for you. Your siblings, uh, you said, were they going to the meeting at the time? Like, what was this? So I, yeah, I'm 17 years younger than the youngest sibling. Wow. They all range from, let's see. 25 ish years older than me to around 17 years older than me. And like I said, I'm 25. So they're in their forties and thirties. And the only one living at home with us at the time was my youngest brother. And I want to say he was around 27, 28 at that time. He was pretty, pretty young adult at age at that time. And he wasn't studying um, for a long time, but then he did start. He wasn't a Jehovah's witness for a long time. So he lived a pretty worldly lifestyle. But I remember he was very supportive of me getting baptized, me going to the meetings, and he was very unsupportive of anything that was not that. Like, he was the most Jehovah's Witness, not Jehovah's Witness I've ever seen in my life. Okay. And your mom, how was she responding to you going to the meetings without her? She was proud of me. I think she was, I think she was happy that I was doing it, but I do remember her think, telling me that she hoped that I was doing it for myself. Okay. I remember her distinctly saying stuff like that. And, and honestly, I know that we talked a little bit before, you know, we started recording and everything. The mother that I talk about now that I referred to as my mom, she's a woman that I met shortly before uh, dissociating. 
And my mother passed away a couple of years ago. So, you know, when I talk about her from the age of like 14, 15, a little bit older, you know, that's my mother that passed. That's my biological mother that raised me. And then there's the mother that the woman that I adopted as my mother um, from around 18, 19 years old. Hey, so after your mom got sick, she passed away shortly after. No, she actually passed away about 10, maybe 12 years after she was diagnosed, even. Um, she passed away two years ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, so she was in my life for a long time. Okay, and what was your relationship like with her? With her? It was good. It was strained. She was definitely not the most mentally healthy. Um, And she was later on diagnosed with like bipolar disorder and depression and all those different things. So I think that, you know, she grew up with a really troubled childhood and she tried to raise me differently than the other kids that she had had, the older four uh, children. So I can tell that she was coming to terms with a lot of things because of the fact that she knew she was going to pass away from having the heart failure. So she, she made a lot of apologies. She made a lot of amends um, and made peace with a lot of stuff before. So honestly, it was very strained when I was a teenager and, you know, around the time I was baptized uh, around the time I was dissociated. Um, but then also I ended up getting pregnant with my oldest son and we reconnected after then. And we had a great relationship until she passed, even despite being a Jehovah's witness still. Well, that's so great to hear. Uh, and then I'm curious, yeah. what happened as you grew up and you stopped going to the meetings? So I stopped attending. Um, I remember we were living in one house and we ended up moving to a different house. And I think I started talking to, you know, to boys and just having my own life and trying to make friends. And I reconnected with a man that was, he was like a, almost like an older brother or father figure to me when I was a Jehovah's Witness, but he actually dissociated. Um, and I reconnected with him after I stopped attending because I was like, I don't have anybody. I don't know anybody. At least I know him. So, you know, I reconnected with him. Um, you know, I was working at this time as well. So I was just trying to live my own life. I was getting piercings and dyeing my hair and trying to have fun, but it was very hard. Um, and then at some point, my mom and I had a really bad fight when I was about 19, 18, 19 years old. I was just around my birthday and she ended up kicking me out and it was in the middle of the night. And I called that, that friend, I called him and he came and picked me up. And the woman that is now who I referred to as my mom, she ended up taking me in. Um, he came and got me. I spent a couple months with him. I'm oh, sorry. My cat's coming over here. <laughs> um, I ended up spending a couple months with him and his fiance at the time and working with them for a while. And I actually, I was really depressed at the time. And I ended up going to a psychiatric ward for a bit for my depression because I was just so suicidal. Um, you know, my life was falling apart and I ended up living with who I refer to now as my mom. So at 19, um, I was living with him when I dissociated. He helped me write my email. Actually, I wrote an email to the, to the elders and said, I no longer wish to be one of Joe's witnesses. And that was it. Uh, good for you for having the courage to do that. And yeah, it's, I'm so happy that you had some support during that time because that time is very, very difficult. So yeah to where you are now which you are still very young with two young children so yes my life has been crazy <laughs> yeah, what have you been up to in the last five years um well I preface it by saying my niece tells me she's 16 she's being raised by my sister who's a Jehovah's Witness and her dad isn't but she tells me your life just moves so fast on Caitlin <laughs> But anyways, like I, I ended up, I met my, I was actually married before I met my ex-husband when I was 19. We were only married for like a month and a half. It was traditional Marine Corps. Like <laughs> you get married in the military, you get divorced in the military type, type relationship. But I just, I went through being married to him, getting divorced. I lived with my brother for a bit. That was pretty crazy because like I said, my brother, the youngest one, he is very, very pious. <laughs> I'll use the word pious. Um, he actually is baptized now. Funny enough, he got baptized before my mom passed. But I, I stayed with him for about six months. And then I came back to my hometown in North Carolina 
and I ended up meeting the father of my child and I got pregnant and that changed the whole trajectory of my life because I was always one of those people when I left that was very pro-choice and I realized very quickly I was pro-choice for anyone else anybody could do whatever they wanted but I was not I was very much pro-life like I I I wasn't living for myself anymore and I was living a really reckless life because honestly I was very I was very disturbed by like my entire childhood being raised the way that I was. It made me incredibly distraught. Like I was just out to, I, I was leading a life of hedonism, basically nihilism and, and hedonism because what was the point of everything? And even if there was uh, an Armageddon, I was going to die anyway. So might as well have fun. So yeah, I was, it was very, it was very depressing, honestly. And then I got pregnant and it, like I said, it changed the tra trajectory of my life because I wasn't living for just me. So yeah, I had my, my oldest son. Um, I ended up meeting my now husband who's been wonderful and I now have two kids and we live in Ohio and <laughs> we have a pretty good life. I think like, it's not perfect, but it, I think it's pretty good. And he's pretty great for me. So quick moving forward. I like what your, what your niece said, the fact that you have two kids already in such a short time and you're just yeah. radiating like happiness. So I, don't doubt what you said at all. I'm curious, does your husband know about the Jehovah's Witness past? Oh, yeah. He is very well aware and he hates all things Jehovah's Witness. He's very much aware. And your brother, <laughs> what kind of relationship do you have with him now? We're distant. We talk, but we're distant because like I said, he got baptized. So, you know, we talk a little bit and, you know, according to the faith, he's not supposed to talk to me, but he still does a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I actually visited him a couple of months ago and me and my sister, we all we all spent some time together and it was really nice. You know, I I am closer to my sister and my youngest brother and I have two other brothers that live out of state. I'm not as close to them, but you know, and I, and I find that funny too, because the two that I'm close to are Job's witnesses well, and the two that I'm not are not. That's crazy that they are actually able to talk to you and don't feel guilty about it too, which is, which is great. I think it's the fact that my mom passed. It pulled us all together. We realized my mom wasn't going to be there to keep us together anymore. And we had to, so we all, we all talked together, but the older two brothers are going through a lot of their own emotional uh you know issues and they're trying to deal with that and they know that they don't want to drag us into it mm -hmm. so they stay distant mm -hmm. and you know I, I commend them for that I mean I wish that they wouldn't do it alone but also I understand why so yeah exactly well I'm so glad that you are where you are right now especially after everything that you've been through and the fact that you were still going to the religion into the religion after you confessed your addiction to the elders and after oh god it's insane that you are so vibrant as you are i just want to ask for anyone who's watching do you feel like you'd like to say or add anything to this interview that you would love to tell anyone who's maybe struggling in the in between world of being a witness and not being a witness I have met the truest friends not being a Jehovah's Witness. Like the people that I know will be in my life for the rest of my life, I've met after leaving. And I definitely can't say that I ever found that being in. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for friends. And I, I tell people it's like a genie answered because I got friends that weren't really my friends. It was a very twisted response. So the like whenever I talk to anybody that is, half in half out or you know what I mean like going through it or have been raised in it and still struggling with it I tell them like my life now yes it moved very quickly for a couple of years there but I have so much of a happier life and I'm so much more confident and I am at a point where I'm able to heal from the issues and I'm not stuck you know what I mean because when you're in the midst of going through a lot of that stuff it's trauma it truly is trauma and you cannot heal when you're going in the middle of it and you have to get out of it to get to that point to realize just how bad it was. So that's that's what I tell people, like, make friends that aren't Job's Witnesses, make a life outside of it, make make that so that when you leave, you're not alone and that you can process things and move forward.
Fantastic advice. I couldn't agree with you more, Kate. Such good advice, like very, very big time. And we did it all without waking up your your two adorable children. So. They're still falling asleep. I can hear them. There, there was a couple of times that they were talking. I could still hear them. <laughs> of course, they're at the age where they're probably talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, well, they're in two separate rooms. So one of them, he babbles to himself and the other one, he talks and he plays. He has little stuffed animals that he plays with. Adorable. Well, thank you for watching this interview. I love this interview with Kate and I hope you did too. Until next time.